something happened. There was an industrial accident in India, in the city of Bhopal. It was a huge tragedy. Thousands and thousands of people died. Thousands were made blind by this gas leak from this company called Union Carbide. And less than a week after the tragedy, I saw the cover of this magazine called Business Week magazine. So the cover was not focusing on the tragedy, on the victims, of the thousands of victims. It was focusing on the company, on the fate of the company. How can I respond to this? This is not possible. Where is the humanity of these people? After three days, I came up with the most simple solution, which was simply to photograph the cover of that magazine, to enlarge it, and to frame it. And I thought, I'm going to show this. And that's the first time I, I, I decided to, to create to trigger that displacement from, let's say, the real world into the world of art or culture. And I was hoping that this simple displacement from one area to another would invite people to look at this with different eyes. My father was a great reader. He felt naked without reading the papers. And this is something that he um, transferred to us. And since then, I've become a news junkie. I, at one point, I was subscribing to the obscene number of 69 publications. Now I'm down to 37. I'm not an artist. I'm an architect. I respond to the context and and so that, this practice in the morning helps me to understand the world in which I live and helps me to, to, to respond to the context in which I live. I had been fascinated by this campaign from CBS News in the subway. If it concerns you, it concerns us. From the point of view of the media, it concerns you. And so we're going to show you, we're going to tell you whatever we need you to know, and we will omit why, what you don't want you to know. So it became quite obvious that I had to reverse that message. And I had been in New York only for two years, and I have no idea, looking from a distance, how I dared to do what I did. I just went at night, took the subway, and stole maybe six or seven of these posters and change the, the text. So that was my first intervention. And then, of course, much later I discovered I could do these kind of interventions and they didn't need to be always in the public space, but in the gallery space, in the museum space. So I intervened covers of magazines, of newspapers, I changed the text, always showing the original and then my change and so that's how, in a way, these interventions were born. Searching for African Life focuses on, on the lack of representation of the African continent in 2,128 covers of Life magazine. And so I wanted to, to put some light on this horrific and this monstrous fact, this systematic racism that shows in the decisions of the editors to ignore the African continent. And so I illuminate these covers 
in the most uh, spectacular way and inviting people to see. Just come and see. And here, there is no intervention from the artist. It's just the only intervention is in the title of the work, Searching for Africa in Life. It's an invitation to search and you will arrive at your own conclusions. Nietzsche said that without music, life would be a mistake. And I've always liked that quote, and, I, and I've gone a little further, saying that without culture, life would be a mistake. I think for me, art and culture are like the air we breathe. Life would be unlivable without culture. Everything I know about the world, I've learned making art, being an artist. And so what I try to do is to share my, my thinking, my thoughts, my speculations about the world, the state of the world, the state of world affairs, and so on, and affect change.